just like you. I focus in on that. And Rivka puts up with it every week. You had 80 people today. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. You know, the Ruach was moving. The Ruach broke out. But they weren't there. Where was she? She wasn't there today. That, that, he wasn't there today. And so now instead of all the beauty, the prophecy, the victory, the edification, I remember that one thing, they were not there today. Yahweh was there. That's the way we are. Offenses will come. But very few offenses have their full face in reality. They're a mirage of the enemy. Old tapes and old hurts start going into rewind. They start playing in our hearts and our minds. These old tapes overcome ourselves. They overcome our ability to function as believers. Satan doesn't have to steal your salvation. All he's got to do is get you to stop functioning. If you function because you're angry or because offenses came and you're null and void, you're ineffective for the kingdom. You can't work for the kingdom. So Satan's job is not to take your salvation. He cannot take your salvation. His job is to nullify you so that you're so offended you are a spiritual pretzel and you cannot enjoy the land of the living, the master of the living, and the land of shalom. You can't enjoy it. And if you can't enjoy the land of shalom, how are you going to contend with the horses of the apocalypse? and the horses of, of loving not our life to death. That's our call, to be witnesses for Yeshua. The Greek word, you shall be my witnesses. When the power of Yahweh comes upon you, you shall be my witnesses. In Yerushalayim, Yehuda, Shomron, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That Greek word, witnesses, as we know, is the Greek word, martero, which means martyrs. Hallelujah. They are the souls under the altar crying out to Yahweh, How long, how long, how long, O Yahweh, who was, who is, and is to come, will you not avenge our souls because we have died for your name's sake? Yahweh wants to train us. Yahweh wants to teach us how to prepare, if necessary, to die for his name's sake. And we are pettied out with pettiness and stupidity. Amen. Remember what? Remember when Yeshua was preaching to the Purushim? Remember when he was talking to the Pharisees? And he said, "Hey, Master, <laughs> you're an, you're an offending mode today. You offended the Purushim. You offended the Sadukim, and you offended the lawyers. Who are the lawyers? The, lo the ones who specialize in Torah." He said, give me a break. I'm not here to worry about who I am offending and who's offending me. I'm here to be planted and do the will of Yahweh. How about you? How about you? Guaranteed, you eat enough meals in the Moet Hall, someone will offend you. You know how easy we get offended? Watch. Let me show you how easy. I'm sitting here, you know, oh, no, I'm sitting here. I can't move the whole time. Pretty good at pantomime, huh? Uh -oh. <laughs> She's not sitting next to me. She's not sitting. Where are all these people? <gasps> they should be sitting next to me. Now, the food doesn't taste good anymore, does it? We don't remember the glory of Yahweh, the prophecy, the victory, the, the new school, the new carpet, the, all these things. Yahweh is the souls that are getting saved and the people around the world. No. no. All we know, we get in the car. Sweetheart, did you notice he didn't sit next to me? There were four chairs. I counted them. <laughs> there's no love in this place. I'm looking for a church where there's love. Four chairs stood empty for two hours. Sorry, it all, it's all the rabbi's fault. Because he's got to train these people how to love. And there's no love in this place, so I'm going somewhere else. All right, let's assume that's right. The rabbi doesn't know how to love, and nobody else knows how to love. 
you be the first one and show us how to love. Let the rabbi's light so shine before men that they see your good work. No. Let your light. Let my light shine before men that they see your good works. Your good works. And glorify your Father who is in the heavens. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Old tapes start going. Our hurts going to your These old tapes, these old hurts, they overcome ourselves, they overcome our ability, they overcome our calling, they overcome Yahweh's favor, they overcome Yahweh's anointing upon us, and they begin to function in our life. If offenses are not dealt with, by placing them on Yeshua, vengeance and hate forms in the heart. Listen, brother. Offenses will come. If you don't have a plan in action before the offense comes, vengeance and hate will form in your heart because it caught you unaware. Offenses always catch you unaware. And offenses cannot happen through casual communications. Offenses happen with the best of friends, with the best of buddies, with the best of prayer partners. It happens between people who are close. <laughs> Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Let me say that again. Offenses will come. And when they come, everybody loves you in the congregation. Everybody loves you in the family. Everybody, everybody loves you and accepts you. But when one person offends you, the old tapes start playing. Mom, mom's voice starts playing in your head. You'll never amount to anything. You're a loser. I wish you hadn't been born. The school teacher says you're a failure. You'll never go to college. Or you may go to college, but when you get to college, what will you do in college? How are you going to handle college? Oh, that old tape in your mind. You, you, were, you turned out to be a girl. Me and your father were praying oh, wow. for a boy. Your brother became somebody. Your cousin became somebody. Look at you. You still work at McDonald's. You're a nobody. How did that happen? Someone, the enemy, the Ruach that rose up, pushed that play button and all these tapes of who your parents, your uncles, your, your, your people of influence in your life say you were, and Yahweh says you're mine, you're beautiful, you're holy, you're blameless, you're forgiven, you're brand new, you're sanctified, you're accepted in the beloved, all that goes out the window, and that one offense causes us to stumble and to pick ourselves up out of the land of Yahweh's planting in Shalom. You are in Yahweh's land of planting in Shalom. You don't need to go looking for it. But even in Yahweh's land of planting in Shalom, there will be offenders. One week it might be me doing the offending. One week it might be Daryl. One week it might be Janet, Yahweh forbid. But you're even in the land of the living and even in the land of Shalom, they're going to be offenders. Question is, are we going to be prepared to deal with it in the right way? Let me tell you this. If we don't study it's more important to study. When Althea does offends me, how will I react? Then it is to know one more verse of Torah. Because you have the Ruach HaKodesh, and the Ruach HaKodesh will lead you and guide you into all truth. Because not knowing one verse less of Torah cannot disqualify you from serving Yahweh. But not knowing how to handle offenses, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it will make you Void, null, nullified, paralyzed by criticism, paralyzed by fear, paralyzed by rejection. And most of the fear and the, and the criticism and the rejection is imagined. It's not even real. It's not even real. But it, it seems to be real to us because when someone does something to us, and we get offended, 
We've got old tapes playing in our head and our heart and our mind. And we don't function as believers, we function as the world functions. And if I'm offended, if you're in the world and you get offended, how do you function? Hate and revenge. When you're offended in the world, how do you function? Hate or revenge. Hate or revenge can either be active or what? Passive. So can you be hateful and vengeful without taking a gun and shooting somebody? Yeah. By withholding love and affection, by withdrawing and going into isolation, depression, and confusion. Because remember, confusion and offenses are kissing cousins. If you have offenses taking place, you also have confusion coming into your life. So in the world, people offend each other, road rage, they deal with it the way the world deals with it. Their father, the enemy, tells them, steal, kill, and destroy, with vengeance and hate. In their heart, they execute and they overcome the offense through the spirit of death. The problem with letting vengeance and hate forming in the believer's heart is when it, vengeance and hate forms in our hearts, our hearts get hard like clay and now a, a brother offended is harder to be one than a city with bars. You better deal with that offense the same minute, the same moment, the same day. Not by email five weeks later. Are you with me? Because then vengeance and hate will rise up in your heart. And when your heart has vengeance and hate rising up in your heart, there's only one way for you to react. Inventions and hate. Are you with me? I said, are you with me? Can I hate passively? Yes. They're not worthy. I'll think, you know something? They're not worthy of my holy presence. I'm just going to disappear. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to miss me. Nobody will notice. I'm just going to just... That's vengeance and hate. As much as... You're going to punish people by withholding your holiness from us. I do it. I, 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 know, I know what it's like. I get offended, and the, if my wife offends me, when my wife calls, guess what I'm not doing? Guess what I'm not doing? Thank you. Boy not here. Delivery. Wait. Yeah, you... Two egg wall, four egg full young, we wait me? Not here, boy, not here. I'm out on a delivery, spiritually speaking. The last person that's gonna get in contact with me is my wife. Problem with that is, day one leads to day two, day two leads to day three, day three leads to, and now we've all got major marital problems. Because when it came, I didn't, I didn't act like a believer. I acted like the world. Amen. And so the world is deceived. They think, well, offense came in my first marriage. Oh, I got the solution to stop the offenses because these are very uncomfortable. I don't like to be told I'm no good, I'm a loser. I don't like to have these bad memories of my childhood. I know how to stop the offenses. I'll get another marriage. I'll go into another relationship. I'll get another partner. I think Elizabeth Taylor has showed us that having changing partners and congregations and pastors is not going to stop you from being offended. You are your own worst enemy. I'm telling you, if you're going to do anything for Yeshua, they're going to not only hate you, they're going to cast out your name as evil. Yeshua says, when that happens, blessed are men when they shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets who were before you. Congregations split, families break up, children and parents don't talk because offenses. No one teaches how to handle offense. We've got plenty of courses on how to cast out demons. We have plenty of courses on how to speak with tongues. 
Go to Oklahoma, sit down. No, not that, not that way. Not that. She rode it. No, 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 no. That, that was the old void. We need a new void. Okay. She rode Kawasaki, Kawasaki. Oh, oh, not Honda. Honda, Honda, Honda. Kawasaki, Kawasaki. You got it. We need training courses. We need classes in how to handle offenses in the kingdom so we don't let the vengeance and the hate in our heart rise up and destroy the kingdom work that Yeshua is doing. That's what we need training in. Because when you let that vengeance and anger rise up in your heart, you're destroying the work that Yeshua died for. <laughs> if everybody knew how to deal with offense, when the offense came, do you realize there would be standing room only in this congregation? you know how many people have passed through this congregation? We would have three services because we couldn't accommodate everybody. We'd have three services. If they knew how to deal with offenses. Many of you were confronted. Isn't that interesting? We have some three or four believers. They're all caught up in the same offense. Two recommit to Yeshua and are stronger in Yahweh's will. And are stronger in Yahweh's purposes. And are stronger in Yahweh's kingdom. And three of them you never see again. Isn't that interesting? Same offense. They say we're offended the same way. Three got strong, better, and three got bitter. The word of Yahweh speaks a lot about controlling the spirit. The greatest power is not an AR-15 or an AK-47 or a lesson in karate. The greatest power is is the man or the woman who can control their emotions. Amen. If you're going to be a rabbi's wife, you better, don't worry about knowing two more verses in Torah. Okay. Ask Yahweh to give you tough skin like the hide of a cow. Amen. But the heart is soft for the people of Yahweh. A soft heart, but a tough hide. Because I've never seen someone disqualified from the ministry because they didn't have the book of Ephesians memorized. I can write you a laundry list of men and women who have been rendered null and void and useless in the kingdom of Yahweh even though they were called by Yahweh because they got offended and they disqualified themselves. There are men and women in this congregation that should be teaching right now. Do you know that? They're either not here or they are blown out of the water because they have not yet learned to rule their own spirit. It breaks my heart. It just breaks my heart when I see all the good men and women who are not serving Yahweh. They should be doing worship. They should be teaching. And instead, they're fugitives in Brazil. I know some people who used to do worship here. Now they're illegal. If they come back to the United States, they're going to get arrested. How did that happen? They got offended. Moshe offended them. Their husband, everybody offended them. Like they're the only person alive that ever got offended. And now they're fugitives from justice. If I named that person, every one of you would know the name. How did that happen? That person let the offense remove that person from the will of Yahweh. And once that vengeance and that hate comes into the heart, and the old tapes begin to play, the heart becomes clay. And now only Yahweh can do a supernatural job to heal the heart. Monty Yahweh 24.10 Let's go. We have a lot to cover. <sighs> Monty Jalo 24.10. How do these one-part messages always turn into three-parters? I, I say to myself, today, it's going to be quick. Today, I'm going to cover most of the material. And then, at the end of the service, I'm still on page one. And I have six pages. It happens. 
what happens. I tell you I'm going to get everything done in one part, and then sometimes it takes three or four parts. So I shouldn't begin the message and say, deal or no deal. <laughs> deal, we can get everything done in one part today. Deal or no deal. I shouldn't make deals. Monty Jao 24.10. And then shall many be offended. Uh-oh. Is, is Yeshua speaking to believers or unbelievers in Monty Jao 24.10? Is Yeshua talking to believers or unbelievers? <coughs> Lloyd, who is Yeshua talking to in Monty Jao 24? Believers. believers, obviously. Believers. Then shall many be offended. Not just one. Not just two. Many believers will be offended. And when you're offended, they will what? Go to step two. Through hatred and vengeance, they will what? Betray one another and shall hate one another. Now I want you to see the progression. If you do not deal with the offense immediately by reigning over it and overcoming evil with good, the person that you don't want to talk to, that's the person you call. The person that you don't want to see, that's the person you say, can I come by your house and take you out to dinner? Is it easy? No. Will most people hear this message and never do a blessed thing I'm telling them? Yes. Most people will never put any of this into practice. No problem. But understand one thing. You do that at your own peril. You, do, you ignore what I'm telling you because I've had to learn it in the school of hard knocks. But in the end times, not just some folks will be offended in the kingdom. Many will be offended. And many brothers will betray others. Betray one another. And, and then they will hate one another. It didn't start as hate. What did it start as? An offense. Hello? Then the offense, if it's not dealt with the way Yeshua dealt with the offense of Adam, shall betray one another. And then when betrayal is perceived, real or imagined, when betrayal is perceived, hatred has an open door. You know why people that have left this congregation don't, don't talk to me? They feel they've been betrayed. Rightly or wrongly. You know why I don't speak to some people? Because I feel I've been betrayed. You know why you don't speak to some people? <laughs> because you feel you've been betrayed. True? But be careful. Once you reach stage two, which is betrayal, you're ready for stage three, hatred. And remember, hatred is not taking a gun and shooting somebody. Hatred could be not loving that person and caring about that person the way you used to. You just can't do it. It's, it's too painful. It hurts too much. And I'm the same way. So you should have said, why go to the hate stage? Once a person feels betrayed, you can either go back and, and deal with the offense by overlooking the offense, because if you don't, you're going to go to stage three, which is hatred. So most of you are caught in the middle. If you've been offended, you're caught in the middle. You're in the betrayal stage. So if you're in the betrayal stage, you can either go back to stage one and reign over the offense, because if you don't, you're going to, you're going to drop down into stage three, and stage three is hatred. I'm warning you. I love you. I'm telling you how to deal with this. If you feel that person betrayed you, go back to stage one and reign over the offense and say, yes, there was an offense in the land of Shalom. But this is a test from Yahweh because if I cannot overcome the test in the land of the Shalom and if the footmen are destroying my Shalom with Yahweh, how will I contend with the horses of the apocalypse of Islam? <laughs> Rodney King was right. Can't we all just get along? The answer is no. The answer is no. Because we have determined, and the scripture has said, that when a brother is betrayed, they feel betrayed, whether it's true or not, they are harder to be won back than a strong city of Baghdad or Tehran, and the contentions between brothers are like bars of a castle. Yeshua said in the end of the age, 
one of the signs of the end of the age is the increasing frequency of the offenses with offenses perceived or real comes a sense of betrayal and ultimately hate we need to learn to handle our offenses before they become betrayals or if we already feel we have been betrayed I have bad news for you you are on your way to hating that person or you already have descended into hatred for that person. And don't say you don't hate because you don't kill. The word of Yahweh says in Yirmiyahu 